followed by the director of music, the groom of the vestry, the forces chaplain, and the deputy priest in ordinary. Chapel Royal, the Lord Bishop of London, the Right Reverend Dame Sarah Mullally, will be conducting the service that follows the two minute silence. Now, the General Officer Commanding London District, Major General Christopher Geeker, and the Chief of Staff, Colonel. Bagshaw and the aide de camp, the Welsh Guards, Captain Orm Clark, and there followed by the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, the leader of the Labour Party. Behind him, Ian Blackford of the SNP, Ed Davy for the Liberal Democrats, Geoffrey Donaldson for the Democratic Unionist Party, former Prime Ministers John Major, Tony Blair, David Cameron, Theresa May, Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London, Liz Sower Roberts, representing Plaid Cymru, Rishi Sunak, Chancellor of the Exchequer, and Ben Wallace, Secretary of State for Defence. And behind them were service chiefs, led by General Sir Nicholas Carter, the first Sea Lord Admiral Tony Rudakin, Chief of the General Staff, General Sir Mark Carlton Smith, and the Chief of the Air Staff. And behind them, the representatives for the Merchant Navy and Fishing Fleets, David Appleton, Air Transport, Auxiliary Association, Mini Churchill, and the Civilian Services, Roy Wilshire, all carrying their wreaths. And they're followed by a very reduced number of High Commissioners. Only five here today, usually over 40. But Malta, Bangladesh, Malawi, Papua New Guinea, St. Vincent and the Grenadines are all here laying wreaths on behalf of other members of the Commonwealth. Priti Patel on the left, the Home Secretary, Norman Fowler, the Lord Speaker, and the Speaker of the House of Commons, Lindsay Hoyle. The Ambassador of Nepal and Ireland, and then the many representatives of the faith communities. They're uh, filing behind the balustrade there. There are 10 Christian denominations and in addition to them, Jewish, Islamic, Hindu, Buddhist, Zoroastrian, Baha'i, Jains, Mormon, spiritualists, and humanists. Over the years, their number has grown at this ceremony. So it's nearly two minutes now until 11 o'clock and the two minute silence. So this is the scene this morning, how very different from what we're used to. Far apart, everybody's standing. But the politicians led by the Prime Minister there. Waiting to lay their wreaths. The members of the religious denominations you see standing behind the balustrade this every effort being made to keep people apart from each other mm -hmm. 
in a moment the royal party who'll be laying wreaths at the cenotaph will come out onto Whitehall led by the Prince of Wales and the Queen will be watching from the balcony. The Prince of Wales comes out first, followed by the Duke of Cambridge, the Princess Royal, Her Majesty the Queen, who watches from the balcony as members of the royal family take their place to the north of the cenotaph. The Prince of Wales who'll be laying the Queen's wreath on behalf of the whole nation. And so we wait for Big Ben to strike and the two minute silence at 11. first wreaths will be laid, the first one by the Prince of Wales on behalf of the Queen. Now, Captain Boyo of the Intelligence Corps on behalf of the Duke of Edinburgh. And now the Prince of Wales lays a wreath on his own behalf. white feathers of Wales. Watching on the balcony, the Duchess of Cornwall and the Duchess of Cambridge. On the right there, the Queen in the centre with a lady in waiting and on the left, Admiral Lawrence and the Countess of Wessex as the Duke of Cambridge comes forward in the office in the uniform of a Royal Air Force officer. He did seven and a half years military service as a helicopter pilot. Duchess of Cambridge watching. And next, the Earl of Wessex in the uniform of the Royal Wessex Yeomanry.
and the Princess Royal, Admiral and Chief Commandant for Women in the Royal Navy. And now the Duke of Kent, Field Marshal, uniform, he was 21 years serving in the Royal Scots Greys and President of the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. flat minor marks a change in the ceremonial with the politicians coming after members of the royal family have laid their wreaths. Led by Boris Johnson as Prime Minister. <laughs> Sir Keir Starmer, leader of the Labour Party. Ian Blackford leader of the Scottish National Party and laying a wreath on their behalf and on that of the Welsh National Party, Plaid Cymru. Ed Davy next, the leader of the Liberal Democrats. Jeffrey Donaldson on behalf of the Democratic Unionist Party of Northern Ireland. Speakers of Parliament, Lindsay Hoyle, Speaker of the House of Commons, and in front of him, Lord Fowler, Norman Fowler, Speaker of the House of Lords. Secretary, 
Priti Patel laying a wreath on behalf of the intelligence agencies. Two further wreaths laid by Kettle War Boys of St. Helena on behalf of the overseas territories, the Antarctic, Gibraltar, Falklands, Bermuda and Willa, the Cayman Islands, and with her Robert Buckland, Lord Chancellor, laying a wreath on behalf of the Crown Dependencies, that's Jersey and Guernsey and the Isle of Man. civilian representatives of the Merchant Navy, the Air Transport Auxiliary Association and the civilian services laid their wreaths together. David Appleton representing the Merchant Navy, Minnie Churchill for the Air Transport Auxiliary Association and Roy Wilshire for the civilian services. ends the official wreath laying curtailed this year and it will be followed by the service as ever led by the Bishop of London, Dame Sarah Mullally. O Almighty God, grant we beseech thee that we who here do honour to the memory of those who have died in the service of their country and of the Crown may be so inspired by the spirit of their love and fortitude that forgetting all selfish and unworthy motives, we may live only to thy glory and to the service of mankind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. good Lord, to serve thee as thou deservest, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for any reward, save that of knowing that we do thy will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Unto God's gracious mercy and protection we commit you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace this day and always. Amen. Rouse played by the trumpeters of the Royal Air Force and now the National Anthem. Queen turns away on the balcony as the royal party on Whitehall file back into the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. With their equerries behind them who pass them the reeds to lay and they'll be followed by the clergy. And this is the moment most years when there'll be a shuffling of feet further up Whitehall as 10,000 veterans wait to come past the cenotaph and lay their wreaths. But all is silent here today as the clergy, led by the bishop and followed by the choir, leave the area around the cenotaph. then led by the Prime Minister, the politicians
and the Mayor of London. You see this way though, under their very tight rules and regulations, walking in strange curves to keep their distance from each other as they leave. This is a very different cenotaph we're seeing this year. The march past of 26, people chosen to represent the armed forces who would normally be here will march to the cenotaph and give an eyes left. They don't have breathes. They representing the Royal Navy Association, Catherine Newington there. Royal Marines Association in the first column, the Royal Hospital Chelsea, Regimental Sergeant Major Ross Martin and John Byrne, and Thomas Metcalf and Alan Collins and Monica Parrott. Represented here, the Royal Air Force Association, the Merchant Navy Association, never to be forgotten for their role in the World War. Ian Aitchison, a transport for London, that more elderly figure, he's 96 years old, he saw a moment ago. He's here representing transport for London. says it's a very big honor to be here today. He served in the Royal Signals in 1942, based in Normandy, when Calais was under bombardment, wearing a Normandy veteran's honor given by the French, the Légion d'honneur, on his chest. The War Widows Association are represented, Christine Zabaya and Moira Kane, Safa, who we heard from earlier. And that, sad to say, is that. That is the march past, such as it is, as we've had today. And you see soldiers there starting to lay wreaths that they're laying on behalf of other organizations who can't be here. And as these wreaths are brought out, all for contingents who would have been here, let's just rejoin Sophie. Well, who could have imagined this time last year that the world would have been so different? I've come here to Whitehall year after year and stood in the middle of thousands of veterans, young and old, so many faces, so many stories, all with so much, so many stories to tell to each other. And there is so much banter and camaraderie and, and laughter even as, as people come together from all over the world, all over the UK, to meet and to remember. This year though, just silence. Eerie, haunting, those are the words that people have been using over and over again this morning. But it has also been incredibly poignant, even more so in a way, because it underlines what this pandemic has done to us. How ironic that for the first time in 100 years, it is a, a silent enemy that has stopped so many people coming here to the Cenotaph to remember the dead. The mass bands are marching off. And still these wreaths are being brought out, laid on the cenotaph on behalf of the organizations who couldn't be here. They were asked if they'd like to send a message with the wreaths and a host of messages came through which 
have been recorded, one from the British Gurkha Welfare Society, Om Shanti Om, you are never forgotten. The Fleet Air Arm Officers Association, even in these difficult times, will remember them. And so they go on, to my brothers that never made the journey home. We saved many, but have lost many to the cruel sea. Fair winds and calm seas, shipmates. Every day is remembrance for us. We pledge ourselves to strive, to think fairly, to love widely, to witness humbly, to build bravely. Some of the many messages that were sent to the Royal British Legion. A hundred years ago when the cenotaph was unveiled and those flowers and wreaths were piled several feet high, the newspapers reported that tears came to the eyes of a policeman who was on duty when he saw a young child stop and lay a plant among the flowers and turn to his mother and say, what a lovely garden my daddy's got. Now this year the garden is smaller, the commemoration more austere, the absence of veterans sorely missed. But the message is the same as ever, honor and respect for those who fought and died in war or were gravely injured and sympathy for their families and friends. We must all hope that next year those feelings will once be again showing their face here at Whitehall. From the Cenotaph, goodbye.